Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is Andrew from Schnauzer Face Minis. It's been a while since my last video and I apologize for that, but I've got more time for my channel again and I'm really excited about this tutorial. Today, I've got a Trollblood's Mountain King and it is awesome. It's not exactly how I would have pictured a Mountain King. Um, I think this may have been a little bit more accurate, but it's still a great sculpt. So let's go ahead and get started. As always, I'm starting with the airbrush. If you're into War Machine and Hordes and you've been on the fence about getting an airbrush, now is definitely the time. I can't imagine how long it would take to paint the Colossals and Gargantuans by hand. Since this is such a large model, I set the PSI a little higher than usual when base coating, maybe around 30 or 35 PSI, but typically I keep the PSI around 18 to 22, though I may drop it down to 10 or 12 for ultra fine details. Keep in mind, the lower the pressure, the thinner your paint will need to be to pass through the gun smoothly. If you're new to airbrushing, try out different combinations of paint consistency and air pressure. You'll find a variety of effects that can be useful for different applications. For example, try turning the PSI really low, maybe 5 PSI. Don't overthin the paint and you'll get a nice spattering effect that could be used for mud or blood and gore effects. I guess I should have warned you earlier, but there's a whole lot of naked troll butt in this video. So if you're offended by that kind of thing, it's probably a good time to stop watching. I use Reaper Master Series Auburn Shadow to start blocking in some colors in the shadows. This is mainly an outline for the next steps, but it's also going to add some visual interest to the finished product. I make my own pigments by grinding down a purple artist pastel. When applied dry, pigments can be used to create extremely smooth color blends. It's a fast and easy way to add color variations into shadows and skin tones, and cleanup is really easy. The excess pigment can be removed with water on a Q-tip. I coat the whole model with gloss varnish to protect the underlying layers and to provide a slick surface for an oil wash, which I make using Mineral Spirits and Winsor & Newton's Van Dyke Brown. Once the wash is dry to the touch, I go back and clean up the excess wash using a Q-tip and clean mineral spirits. After this is dry, I'll cover the whole model in a matte varnish. I use painter's tape and blue tack to mask off areas I've already painted. A lot of companies make poster tack, but my favorite is from Loctite. Painter's tape will go on easier and cover larger areas, but poster tack is more precise and you can model it around irregular shapes. So like I said, it's been over a month since my last video, and I apologize again. I'm a teacher, so I've had all the beginning of the year stuff going on. 
But the main reason I've been AWOL is because I've been really overloaded with commissions, and to be honest, that kind of burned me out on the whole hobby for a while. If you're thinking about starting up a commission service, I'd strongly suggest thinking twice about whether you want to turn your leisure activity into a business. You may find yourself dreading the hobby you used to find so relaxing. If you're really dead set on doing commissions, I'd encourage you to take it slow. Start with only one or two models at a time before you agree to paint someone's full army. Try to choose models you'll really enjoy painting too. Units and troopers are soul-sucking enough when you're painting for your own army, and it is significantly worse when you're grinding through 40 space marines that you're not even going to use yourself. But most importantly, you've got to learn to say no if you don't have the time or enthusiasm to paint something. I've learned that lesson the hard way, and it nearly killed my love for the hobby. I've decided to completely phase out my commissions though because I really want to dedicate time to my channel again, so hopefully there won't be any more unexpected absences in the future. I wasn't happy with the shadows, so I use a variety of purple and red pastels to add in more color variations. After this, I'll hit the whole model with another matte varnish. I use Vallejo Liquid Metal Silver, which is an alcohol-based paint, so it needs to be thinned with alcohol. It's best to dedicate a cheap brush specifically to your alcohol-based paints, as the solvents will not be kind to your natural hair brushes. Now I use a mix of orange, brown, and yellow pigments to simulate rust. I mix these all together and water them down to a wash consistency. When they dry, the pigments will separate, which will give you a random variation of colors, and they'll also leave a really dry, rusty texture. I want his butt skirt to look like it's been patched together from different scraps of leather, so I'll use three different brown triads. I'm using blue tack to mask off patches when changing colors. This is a great example of when poster tack is better than painter's tape. It'd be really challenging to cut the tape to the precise shape of the patches, so poster tack is the way to go.
I hollowed out the base to give more depth for water effects. I previously did a tutorial on hollowing out bases, and I've got a link to that in the description. I start by mixing a big ball of plumber's putty. It's a two-part epoxy, just like green stuff, but it's a lot cheaper and it hardens in minutes. I roll a rock all over it and add some texture because I want this to look like a big pile of mud. I water down matte medium one to one with water and coat the plumber's putty. Using the same brush, I start piling on various mud colored weathering pigments. I'll eventually cover the entire base with this mixture. I finish it off with Wyman floor polish to give the pigment a wet, muddy look. After that, it's just a matter of throwing on some Woodland Scenics water effects and realistic water, and I'm ready to call it a day. But first, I want to say thanks to all of my subscribers. I appreciate you guys sticking with me and waiting patiently for new videos. More tutorials will be on the way soon, so keep checking back often. Thanks for watching, and have a great day! Mm -hmm.